Welcome to Screen Riot. This week's movie is Lamb, a mystery from 2021. This episode will contain major spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, it's available to rent on all the major streaming services. Go check it out and come back to the podcast because this is Screen Riot. So welcome to Screen Riot, the podcast where we review movies chosen entirely by fate. If you're having difficulties finding movies to watch, then this might be the podcast for you. I'm one of your hosts, Justin, and alongside me in this little uh, Brady Bunch kind of thing here are co-hosts Eddie, Kyle, and John. And if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the channel, uh, comment, let us know of any movies that you'd like to see us review, uh, hit the bell, uh, hit the like, do all the things, uh, because we need it. And, um... Yeah, so like Kyle said at the very beginning, that we are going to be taking a look at Lamb. It's rated R, has a runtime of 1 hour 46 minutes, and it was written and directed by an Icelandic Icelandic uh, writer and director. His name is uh, Vladimir Johansson. Hopefully I'm saying that right. So, yes. Kyle, why don't you go ahead and tell us what Lamb is all about? Oh, man. So, um, so some sheep farmers in Iceland um, named Maria and Ingvar are helping one of their sheep give birth and a strange creature comes out and it's kind of like a half lamb, half child, half human being. Um, but we're kind of tossed into a, I'd say like kind of a beautifully shot movie, um, horror, mystery, fantasy. Um, I know Eddie <laughs> loved this movie. Uh, really. yeah. Well, <laughs> Eddie, yeah, you came right into the, right into the show on, Basically about the, you said, uh, you're going to tear this lamb chop apart, right? So, <laughs> mm, uh, lamb chops. No, I mean, it, it, it's, okay, so, kind of breaking it, breaking it apart a little bit. First off, I don't see the horror. I don't think it's a horror movie at all. I don't, I don't get the horror aspect. Uh, not, not in your typical, I can't, I can't, not in your yeah. typical horror nowadays, no. I can't think of anything that was horrorish about it. Um, yeah, I said it. The second thing, <laughs> um... The second thing about it, I mean, I agree with Kyle. I think that it is definitely beautifully shot. I think if you pick location, 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 you know, to be like in the middle of the fucking like Icelandic mountains yeah. and there's, you know, this this idyllic sort of farm farmhouse and everything, it, it's very hard to screw that up as far as not making that pretty. Yeah. Um, that being said, the cinematography in the movie was pretty solid. I didn't have any problems with it. I thought the acting uh, for Ingvar and, and Maria anyway was okay um Numi, how do you say her name anyway is it Numi rapace i think so uh, yeah that's how like i would that. pronounce it yeah. yeah yeah she's been in a ton of stuff i mean she was in the girl with the the, the dragon tattoo she Which was that's in what that i know movie, her from cl yeah close uh mm -hmm. close closer closer um i mean she's been in a ton of stuff and she's a you know she's a pretty good actress so i mean yeah i think she does a good job in this as well i thought she definitely shined more than the other two yeah, yeah. I mean, she definitely had the most emotion, I thought. Yeah, in in this. Ingvar was boring as fuck. Um, yeah. <laughs> so any time that he was on screen, I was like, oh, good. Another, like, half-baked sort of mediocre performance is about to happen. Yeah. Um, but but the the term slow burn, um, oh, there's yeah. a lot of, of you know, um, Icelandic and, and Norwegian movies right now that are coming out in the last probably decade that are um, in this slow burn genre. This one's pretty slow. Um, mm -hmm. There's a few horror movies that I've seen that 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 have come out of uh, out of uh, the Scandinavian countries, like I said, that um, that are slow burn horrors. This mm -hmm. one, I, again, Takes I don't see this. Well, I don't see it as horror. That the, the the big payoff with a lot of those slow burn horrors is that they have a lot more psychological, like um, you know, thriller type aspects to them, to where to where they're you know they're lively. Uh, mm -hmm. this one wasn't lively to me it was boring as hell like the, almost the entire time it was i mean i don't want to say boring it was like it was monotone you know what i mean like yeah. even you know the oh, it's it's half a lamb half a girl it's like okay well it was sort of just shown like there was no build up there was, i think a lot of it had to do with music there was there was there was no real like tense crescendoing music. yeah music, there was, yeah there was no music to drive it and, and right. with the slow burn stuff you've got to have like a score to push the movie along and yeah, that's one thing I did. I definitely noticed is there wasn't any noticeable music. Did you guys any notice a like a score of any kind that was not like, that I remember. a traditional I, I score? I enjoyed what I heard, but it but it wasn't a score in the traditional sense. I don't believe. 
Yeah. Yeah, the Maybrother was not like a theme running throughout the whole, like a common motif running throughout the whole thing. Right. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I didn't hear anything like that. No, it, it was just. Um, but I it think was just a. Think, oh, God. I think it was more of a. Um, it, the the re- I think the reason it didn't it didn't have that I think it's it's so we would identify more with the the actors the 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 uh, married couple mm-hmm. that we were like it's just a normal thing for them at this point. Yeah, and, it's kind of you're going through kind of like a day to day life of sheep farmers. Yeah, you know, you wake up, you you know, take care of your sheep, you know, you help give birth and. That's pretty much it. Well, I think and that even then with the reveal of okay, this is a this is a anamorphic being. Mm-hmm. It's it's normal for them at this point. So they're just like so they didn't they didn't like yeah. sting it with I know I know I've heard like that. Yeah, I know I've heard of like deformities in cows and obviously there's deformities in all these farm animals and stuff. So they probably saw this as, you know, just a Eh, it's just a normal deformity, you know, that would happen. But well, since we don't have a kid anymore, and it looks a little human-like, then let's keep it. Well, that's what you know? that's what I was gonna say. I don't think that they think that this is normal. I think that they are willing to overlook the abnormal in order to um, overcome their sadness. I don't think well, that I meant, it's a normal. I meant, deformity I meant the mean. well, I meant the normal, nor- the normalcy of having a deformity of creature come out. They're not, they're not, they're probably used to one out of, I don't know, 50 or 100 coming out with like two heads or, you know, four or five uh, hooves or something like that, or five hooves or something. I don't know. But I don't, not, not, I, not to this level. Like, Cause I thought yeah. that the reaction when it, when this came out, I mean, I didn't really sense a huge surprise to them. They were just kind of like looking at it, looking at each other like, um, well, and I think, do we keep it or do we kill it? Like, well, no, exactly. Uh, and I think that's part of the the flaw that I'm saying in the movie. Like, if they mm-hmm. had reacted, like, had Ingvar been like, "Whoa, Maria, like, we can't do," like, if he had been the voice of reason, yeah, I could understand. Like, okay, so this isn't right, and she's going to push it into an area that it's not, you know, that's that's not right, which is where the movie's going to go horror, thriller, etc. Yeah. But Ingvar just seems to be like, eh. This is yeah, to- totally uh, normal that this uh, that this lamb just came out. And it's out almost with like they had like some body. sort of mind meld going on. Like they're just communicating without words, and they're like, "Yeah, I- okay, I know what you're, I know what you're thinking. Let's let's keep it." Well, okay, yeah, they're, which... they're both missing their their previous daughter. Which yes. Yes. what I was going to say is, I think uh, going back to the the idea of the movie being kind of slow burn kind of thing, mm-hmm. and yeah. we were saying that it's done by music, but I also think it's done really well by the camera work. Because mm-hmm. a lot of the a lot of the camera work is either stationary, or real slow dollies and that kind of thing, um, and and the acting leading up to the birth of the of the lamb, it's there's no dialogue for nine minutes and forty three seconds if I remember yeah. correct, right? Um, yeah, yeah, it was pretty wild. There's there's even a shot where on the radio you hear like Christmas music. But they don't put up like any hmm. holiday uh, de- decorations or anything, right? So it's they're definitely in this like mourning sadness. We don't know why. Yeah. Well, yeah. At this point, we don't know why. Yeah. Yeah. But we can. Yeah. As an audience, you're, you're kind of wondering what what what's the because they have a weird tension between the two. Mm-hmm. Like like yeah. Yeah. they have these weird conversations. Like they start talking about some um, time travel. So when they that was yeah. like one of the first words in the whole thing, and so I started uh-huh. thinking this is gonna be a tri- time travel movie, right? Because they put that <laughs> in your head at the beginning. The camera work is so slow, and it builds like like you were saying, which I I think it was supposed to be. Hey, these two, they're just going in the the just they're just living, yes. right? They're not they're not enjoying life. Mm-hmm. They don't hate life. They're just living. Yeah, and yeah, I think that just kind of moving on. And I think Ingvar just being going back to what Eddie said, just being like on board with it, like immediately. I think he's um, like what tends to be when when a a couple loses a a child, um, the especially you know uh, apparently the the child was still, their child real child was stillborn. Mm-hmm. I, I I didn't I I didn't realize that. Um, Is that like introduced in the movie or something? Because. Yeah, because no, I didn't I, see I, anything I didn't, like that. I didn't see anything like it either. 
I mean, unless it was on the the cross that wasn't translated into English, I don't know. Right. Oh, um, yeah, I, I didn't. But, uh, but no. yeah, apparently, apparently she was stillborn, and perhaps the that he's come to terms with it, but she hasn't, and so he, mm -hmm. so he's like, whatever needs to happen here to get my wife back to back to her normal self i'm gonna do regardless see I, th I think you're right john because i i think she is probably more in the driver's seat of keeping the baby even though we don't have we don't see any kind of like confrontation between the two i feel like she's the more paternal of them oh yeah absolutely well, she's and the he... one that she's the one that eventually shoots the the mom mm -hmm. the yeah. uh the lamb mother or sheep mother, whatever the fuck. I, it, uh, yeah, she's the one that eventually shoots them. So I would definitely say she's in the driver's seat. I, I mean, I, I can just you blame her? Because yeah. that, that thing was annoying as hell. I, well, well, it spawned know, this demon man. baby. So man. well, not just that, she stole its damn kid. I mean, what, yeah, are, you, I mean, what are you gonna do here? Yeah, I mean, I mean, the whole the whole story to to me, I mean, it, it has a ton of themes, but I mean, it's um a lot about man's control and exploitation of nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, believing Kinda, yeah. that we're that we're superior to animals and we can do whatever the hell we hell we want. You know, I'm, I'm gonna okay. Well, you know, I want this, so I'm gonna take your baby. Yeah. And the mom's like, "What the hell are you doing, lady? You're not gonna take my baby. I'm gonna get she my was, baby, and I'm gonna take my yelling. baby to the mountains." And she <laughs> yeah, got she shot was, for her trouble. Yeah, she was yelling out the window, "Give me child support, at least." <laughs> yeah, she just wanted her kid back. Well, I just think the sheep had more lines than half the humans in the movie, and <laughs> that's, that's a problem in a movie. Yeah, <laughs> like, sheep three one one five probably got paid a lot of money. Yeah, like they the the damn animals had more lines. That that to me was a problem. It's um, like it's like Groot, you know, had more lines than uh, than everybody else. <laughs> yeah, the, I, I do Bleh. think I, I do think there's some cultural things that that we um, are missing here. Like I I think that there's a uh, I mean, I, I know there's some, like, fable, storytelling, morality tale type stuff being told. Like, what John's alluding to with the, the man versus nature, I think that that is definitely part of it. But I think that it's also probably, like, rooted in some kind of fairy tales of Iceland or something. Um, not that we get that shit, because we're not from Iceland. Right. But yeah. um, this movie, to me, is, like I said, it's a morality tale. There, there's definitely, like, elements of the... Well, the fucking ram man. I mean, that's not a normal thing, right? So you have to come up with with an explanation for <laughs> well, that. Well, I read I read a I read an, an interview with um, uh, how do you say her name? New, I, I'm going with Numi Rapace. Rapace. Yeah, Rapace. Yeah. yeah. Um, I read an interview with her, and she said that her, because she's from Iceland. Yeah. Um, she said that her grandmother always used to tell her she grew up on a farm. Okay. And her grandmother always used to tell her to to be be kind to to all beings and animals, even the ones you can't see. Okay. Hmm. So obviously there's some, well, her, her grandma is talking saying? about elves and stuff like that. Well, you know, over in, in Iceland yeah, and they believe in and, trolls and, and elves and in lore and all that. Yeah. They believe in trolls. You know, they've got the troll thing and all that stuff. So, and the okay. elves and, um, what are the, the Irish things, the David, the gnomes, you know, sprites, the yes, leprechauns, the leprechauns. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, all that good stuff. About the gold. You just told me to John's people. Let's be honest. But that beard and stuff. I mean, like uh, it's trolls. Yeah. Yeah. World no, of John the Gnome. <laughs> trolls, over here. definitely. Yeah. Now, one thing that did like take me like out of the movie uh, was the introduction of the brother character Peter. Yeah. The, yeah. the way they introduced him, where they show him getting thrown from a car, and then somebody... well, he was he was in a damn trunk. I don't know. I oh, I, right. I couldn't follow yeah. half of what the hell was happening with Peter. Honestly, like once he got to the farm, I was like, okay, it's his brother. Before that, I was confused as fuck. Like well, we go from the farm to suddenly yeah. we're with a guy in a leather jacket, and I'm like, who the fuck is this? Which well, I thought. Thing, oh yeah. Go I ahead. thought just real quick. Um, they looked so much alike. Yeah. That I you thought, thought it was Ingver. Well, I thought it was the time travel bit that they uh, that they put oh, ahead. Well, so my nice. mind was going, oh wait, okay, are we in the future or are we in the past or something Ooh, like oh, that? Oh man. We're like, see, that's where more of the fantasy would come into play. Yeah. This is Ing Ingvar in college right here. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I could see that, Justin. I think, again, you're writing a better movie. Had uh, time travel suddenly come into it, I don't think we would have been like, wait, time travel? I mean, Ram Man. That's just like two words. Like if somebody said, wait, time travel? You're like, Ram Dude. You're like, ah, never mind. Let's go. Okay, time travel. <laughs> like, it's it's yeah, man. Ram Man. Ram Man is actually Ingvar, like, 
because he got resurrected or something. I don't know. Which okay, so let's talk about Ram Man versus the Lamb real fast. Um, are we gonna completely ignore that the Lamb is beyond the fact that the Lamb is half Lamb, half girl? Uh, the Lamb actually has a deformity on top of that. Her one of her hands is a hoof. Mm-hmm. Ram Man had two hands, like two man hands. Right. Yeah. So that that means that this little oh, child I see what you're saying. She has a deformity in that. Is still species. fucked. Yeah. yeah, even in that species, she's still messed up. Maybe it was, you know, round one. Well, we don't know where Ram to... Man came from. It's right. ma'am. Yeah. yeah, it's we ma'am. Don't, we don't know where Ram Man came from. <laughs> ma'am, so man lamb. Yeah. Perhaps this is his first time repro- re- reproducing. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, you know, the species has to get started off somewhere. True. Yeah. So, so Maybe we'll start it's... calling him Adam. Like Adam Oof. and Eve. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Oh. I just, well. I just like that he was able to uh, not and, just exact his revenge, but also just be so freely walking around the mountains, you know, butt ass naked. Like that's got to feel good. Just, just the the cold Icelandic air on your nuts. Like that's got to feel <laughs> refreshing. You know. Okay, I mean? so yeah. Speaking of walking around, you know, the whole opening of the movie was just nothing but walking, like, walking or. Yeah. I guess it was a POV shot mm-hmm. of the monster or the lamb man, man lamb. Well, you don't know, man, man. Yeah, at the beginning. Well, it, it is because you could hear the breathing. Well, yeah, but it, it sounds like and, human breathing. Well, I, yeah, but it's some sort of thing, whether it be a creature or human, whoever. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously startles the animals or the horses or whatnot. But you kind of figured out that it was that person that we were looking through the eyes of that creature at the end, because you heard the breathing again, you know, when yeah, the he, lamb he brought, man was coming he up brought with the gun. He oh, home from the date, and she came in, and she collapsed. She was exhausted. That, which is what I was about to say. I'm glad that <laughs> editing Merry took place Christmas here. Merry Christmas to her. Because we, we didn't see Ram Man take 3115, if you know what I mean. <laughs> no, but that 3115 a, came in, and she's like, oh. That would have been an interesting opening to that movie, though. If but where's her cigarette and her whiskey? Uh, She's done. But oh, man. brought her home before eleven. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Well, and it was daytime the whole time, so who I knows was about what? to mention that too. Yeah. <laughs> that that did okay. Yeah, let's talk about the the daytime stuff, the daylight savings or whatever you want to call it. Um, <laughs> their daylight savings. savings. Yeah, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> Geographics. <laughs> the yeah, hell they, are you they, talking about? <laughs> they have uh, they have American laws in uh, in Iceland too. Yes. Oh god! Um, no, We're the, save the daylight. I didn't I didn't even think about it until one of the scenes when the brother uh, sneaks into the room and mm-hmm. the couple is asleep and he grabs the um, the lamb child. Yeah, you know? I didn't even think about it, but in that scene, like all the windows are open, it's like daylight. I'm like, what yeah. is it? Like, oh, that's right, Iceland. Yeah, and and it takes it obviously takes place during more of like a spring slash summer time because yeah. obviously you can see green and, and there's right. grass and all that kind of stuff. It's not just covered in snow. So during the summer months, they actually have more daylight than I guess. I think they have all daylight and and not any nighttime. I don't um, know, but mm-hmm. that daylight was just becomes like overcast. Kind <clears throat> yeah. Of. And then yeah, during something... the day, it's like the sun will actually shine. Right. Yeah. That's, that's. I mean, when I first noticed it was when they were like just randomly going to sleep or going to bed. And I'm like, uh, it's not nighttime. Like, are you just taking a nap or something or what? But then I was thinking, oh, wait, this is actually in Iceland. So there is no night, what especially helps during is... this, this time of day, what, uh, time of year. What helps is their attire. You know, mm-hmm. she, yeah. she'll get into a nighty and he'll be in, a, he'll be in different clothes yeah well it's just a weird like i've never actually seen a movie incorporate like just nonchalantly like hey this is what's going on outside and the weather and stuff well that's what i was about to say is one thing that i did enjoy about this movie is they don't knock you over the head with stuff right like like for instance um when with the the daytime stuff obviously but Mm -hmm. uh like one of the other parts was when uh ingvar goes out to the shed and he grabs a crib immediately i went oh wait Nobody just has a crib lying around unless they've had a kid before. So right. I started going, oh, so that's what's going on. That's why they're yeah. being so uh, maternal and paternal with this this but, baby. But at the Something same time, happened to their previous kid. But at the same time, that was it, it flawed the movie as well because there was so little dialogue that you... I mean, because what you're talking about right there, that's 38 to, 38 to 45 minutes into the movie. 
Mm-hmm. Well, you the first time you see the the baby, um, like uh, the lamb with the the, the body is it's when like an hour. Yeah, it's about forty minutes in. Yeah, when um, when they steal it back from the mother. No, uh, when, no, you don't even see it then. You don't see it yeah. until yeah. It's when do. it's when the kid like goes off and they they can't find. No, him. I meant I meant uh, yeah. When they steal it back from the mother, not oh yes. not when it just came out, but they they steal it back from the mother because the mother took it from right somehow from the house. I don't know. Called yeah. it from. It's like come child, <laughs> come downstairs. Or maybe it just like Bat. rode the sheep like like a little horse <laughs> or something. Yeah. We'll never know. Um, I just they obviously I just, couldn't hold the hand because those those scenes were pretty hilarious to I, me. I, I actually love those shots. I don't know why <laughs> it's so absurd. It it I like it. it. I don't know. You just wanted a lamb to dance, man. There was I, I did. <laughs> there was quite a bit of absurdity in this, though. That's sort of my problem with it. it it's it's so outlandish that it becomes laughable in certain parts. Like, when I saw the Ram Man guy finally show up, I wasn't hor- horrified. I was like, <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I didn't... I don't know. I just didn't find it... I don't know. It, they, they needed more of something. They either needed more action or more dialogue. But to be to be short on both, to me, left the movie feeling very empty. And that is never a good thing for me. Like, I don't want the movie to feel completely bereft of... Like, why watch it if it's empty? <laughs> You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like I it just wish it had one of those. Well, it definitely it allows you to to basically think for yourself and to kind of wander. Well, it's uh, a mystery as well. So I mean, it, it it definitely makes your mind wander because you're you're constantly thinking, okay, what's why is this thing here? Why are they doing this? What what? Club eat field the Why are Whoa. they doing this? And then when the I guess they paid off pretty much everything that I was questioning because I'm thinking, okay, why do they have a crib? And then they go to the hill and there's a cross there with uh, Ada on yeah. the on the cross. So I'm like, oh, okay, they lost a, a a child and they just renamed it, you know, renamed the sheep Ada. It's yeah. like kind of like a a replacement for mm-hmm. for lack of a better term. But then, you know, like okay, what was the breathing noise thing? Oh, it was the lamb man. Cool. And it's like, what's what's spooking everything? You know, it, Hold on. it's you hate thinking when you watch movies. Who the fuck? Like, who are you right now? You don't like thinking when you watch movies. You're the opposite of that. You're popcorn guy. You like, uh, like you have heat. said that before. Yeah. I have yeah. said it before. Yes, but <laughs> and at the same time, at the same time, when there's no dialogue, you have to think. No, I agree. And but the the thing is, like, I don't mind movies like this. But what I'm saying is, and, even and with why movies, and why do you think that that's a positive thing? What I was just saying. Even well, because because of the way you're you're presenting it, you're like, well, it allows you to think. I'm like, I agree with you, but whenever you well, have yeah. it, whenever you have that thinking, get to such a level that you're like, what is happening? But like, it also I, left me. It also left me a lot like very very confused most of the movie. Okay, which okay. I don't so, I don't like. Okay, no. So the very confused part, you and I shared. It, that's that was def- the word I yeah. was looking for. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it definitely allows you to think. I mean, that's a, that's a fact. Yes. Right, it uh, makes but, you fucking do it. Yes, but at the same time, like when I was I was done watching this movie, I'm like, oh, what the hell did I just watch? Okay, I, I'll be I, honest, I wanted more. I, I did. So, so did I. I. I did too. Yeah, I mean that that's a sign of a good movie. It leaves you but, wanting more. But I also wanted more when they had the chance to give me more. Oh, absolutely. That's yeah. what I think. Yeah. Like like I didn't put two and two together with the crib. Because I, I I'm, I, I'm from a family, you know, backwoods kind of family where, hell, I mean, that crib could have been five, you know, it could have been five generations back and it was just stored, right? Cause yeah, because like, that's oh, an old we, house. We're, we're going to need a crib one day, right? Yeah, well, that's um, an old house, too, because exactly. they probably inherited it or somebody right. inherited it. I didn't pick up on that, the whole, like, they had a, a kid uh, pass away until I saw the cross. So I'm like, oh, that's okay. Now, now a lot of things make sense. But I mean, they could have done 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 a real, you know, just a a um, a funeral bulletin on the table, mm-hmm. or something, or mm-hmm. a little memorial or something in the, on on a yeah on a at the very beginning or something, or something like that, you know, to where yeah. we just if you miss it, you miss it. But I mean, at least it's there. Well, and there's and there's been a, quite a few movies I've seen. I can't remember the name of the movie in particular, but there was one that was all about like um, a husband and wife lost their child, 
And the movie was about how the relationship was literally being like torn apart by the death of their child and how they couldn't get to it. But the way that you knew that was like 50 different ways. But one of the main ones was just dialogue. They just had conversations like they woke up and she's like, I miss him. You know, little just one sentence. You don't need to really think about it. He's like, I know me too. That's it. That's all you need to know. You know, and it's like had Ingvar looked at her and been like, you know, uh, what was her name? Maria? Maria, Mm -hmm. are you sure? Yes, Ingvar, it helps me get past her. Period. Okay, cool. So she's using the lamb to get past the child, or you know, get past the death of her child. But I agree. Like it left me. I like it more the 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 more time since I watched it, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But there's definitely there were definitely elements like when I was watching it, where I was like, fuck. Like I just want I I want either more action or more dialogue. One yeah. or the other, like fucking kill me with dialogue a little bit here. Cause it was almost the exact opposite. It was like the director was like, or the writer was like, I don't like dialogue. And the director was like, me neither. And they just went anti dialogue uh, for the whole movie. Well, and the, the, damn bro- movie the brother drive. could have even, even inter- introduced that. You know, Peter yeah, could have, yeah. Could have, you know what? Oh, you screw me. This when isn't going to replace her kid dying, but you know, yeah. something, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, just something to where you enter, you obviously introduced him for a reason. It's still vague to me. I mean, the movie stands on its own without him being in it. Well, what did he change? Well, he didn't change anything, but he did bring tension. He brought tension between himself and Maria because yeah. obviously yeah. they had some kind of sexual tension between each other. <clears throat> um, and then I, I like the scene where he's going to kill the lamb. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, it uh, could have been something to where it's like, okay, I'm going to take him down this other... I'm going to take the audience down this other road of going, okay, well... Lamb, Lamb of God, Jesus, Peter doubted God, Peter walked on water, and then just because he started <laughs> believing. I, John, I think you're writing a better know. movie again. Yeah, well, no, it's called they... the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Already written. Uh, it's been written. It's been, it's been I done. You, I see what you did there. <laughs> but Mark, I could you do know, better. Year zero, I guess. <laughs> um, but no, like, okay, so when the brother first came on to the set or to yes. the movie, uh, it was when I first saw him, obviously he was being thrown from a car, right? Mm-hmm. So he's just, I thought he was just a, a loner. Okay. Didn't know her where he was at. And he just walked upon this farm. And the first shot that we see of him on this farm is hiding behind a building. When Maria is walking back from shooting the mother of the, the sheep, the sheep mother. Um, yep. And, and he's hiding for, I was thinking, Okay, well, I guess he's just a drifter that right. doesn't want to get caught, right? And then you cut to him sleeping in the barn, and then Ingver comes in, and he's like, oh, when did you get in, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, so they know each other. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this dude's not just, uh, okay, I guess he's his brother or uncle. Or yeah, that felt like forced cousin. tension that they were trying um, to, to do. I'm not really sure who you are at this at this time. Well, and see, okay, so the only here's the problem I have with Peter. The only thing I can come up with for him is that he's supposed to be us in some way. Yes. Like he's he's like normal. He's, the he's like normal human who looks at this and is like, uh, what "The fuck are you guys doing here?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think actually, I think he actually says that, and he's like, yeah. "What the fuck is that?" That's, <laughs> he has the one line that sums up the whole movie. Yeah, yeah, but that's yeah, the only much. thing. That's the only reason I can have for him because the problem is he doesn't bring enough conflict. Like he doesn't, mm. he doesn't force them to like, like end up in an argument together, or like maybe the pair who are going to keep, uh, you know, to where like like maybe had he gotten Ingvar like kind of on his side and started to break up the couple on on uh, Ada. Then I could see like okay, so what he's doing is he's kind of like causing doubt, and he's gonna break their he's gonna break up their little union, um, but that didn't happen. And Which I, I was, thought that that's what was gonna happen. I, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, that would have at when, least caused some conflict, but yeah, because right when he actually said, you know, what the fuck is that, or what the yeah. hell is going on? Yeah, I'm thinking, okay, this is why you're here. You're you're basically the voice of reason of this is wrong. I don't know what the hell is going on with you guys, but your guys are. Well, you know, you guys are going insane. I have a feeling that the reason the writers put him in the movie in the whole play in the whole first place was because when uh, Naomi play uh, Rapace drives him to the bus stop and he leaves, that you're supposed to think that he came back and started killing, you know, killing things. That's Maybe we- that's a weak that's a uh, weak that's, reason. If that's the reason, yeah. that's pretty weak. That would be pretty pretty bad stretch. Yeah. 
because I, I didn't I go there. I, like whenever whenever Ingvar started being like whenever he got hurt and everything, I was like, oh cool. So somebody's fucking coming to call. But I I thought Peter was gone. Like Peter to me, the problem I have with him is he's inconsequential. He he doesn't change anything in the movie. If you take Peter's whole situation out of the movie, did they still take Ada? Yes. Did they still lose Ada to the Ram Man? Yes. Did Maria and Ingvar ever not be together about Ada? No. They were they were a hundred percent together on it the whole time. So yeah. what? What so no difference? Conflict yeah. What difference did Peter make in the movie? It, it, it's just a waste of a character. I don't understand. I mean, it really could have been. I mean, and I'm not. I'm not trying to, to dog the movie by any means because I mean, it's it to me, it's 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 a pretty decent film. Yeah. But um, but it could have been a short. I agree. Very, it could yes. have very easily 30, been a short. Thirty minutes, a solid thirty minutes. Oh yeah. That movie. That movie. I would be like, okay. Yeah. Cool. It, it definitely. It was wouldn't a, be a short. Iceland's most gro- best grossing film of all time. Is it really? Yeah. It is. Yeah. No way. Well, yeah. speaking of, um, with the budget yeah, with the this budget? guy, that's sad. It was. It was actually. Ooh, you know what? I don't have a budget. I mean, it is Iceland, so I mean, it's kind of you know. All I have is people. is uh, gross. Um, Iceland's got some good movies though. This is this is not one of the best movies I've ever seen from Iceland by far. That's why I'm confused by that. But I mean, the gross worldwide is three point one million. You know, but going other singular animal names like the other movie we watched with Nick Cage, Pig. <laughs> Pig. <laughs> it, at least there was an actual Pig. like plot. I mean, the plot wasn't it was fantastic, thin. but yeah. at least there was a plot, and you knew you basically knew what was going on. As that was right. outlandish and fucking weird as it was, you had an idea as to what was happening. This movie, I, I spent almost half the movie going, "This can't just be it, right?" Like it's not just that they took the, they took a lamb animal thing and they're replacing their child like that can't be the only part of this movie and then once ram man shows up i'm like okay so he's part of nature they they perverted nature by trying to take the kid they shouldn't do that and naomi rapace realizes that at the end which is why she's not distressed about ingvar's death she's accepting that she fucked up you can't you can't hurt nature don't do it so that's why she's able to to just kind of fade to black at the end of the movie yeah I mean, I'm I'm not finding an actual hard budget on this movie at all. All I know is it just made 3.1 million. So I mean, I I don't think it it shouldn't have cost that much no. to make. No, 20, because 20 million probably. It, what? 20 million. Well, how, wow, that's Ooh, the, the, uh, ma- the Ram Man's makeup was pretty solid. It was CGI. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, as much uh, as CGI. And it's even more puppet. expensive. You know how much CGI costs nowadays. Yeah, but you only <laughs> see them on screen for like three minutes. Yeah, like I'll... that's not that's not a whole lot of time on the render farm. Yeah. Back to um, why I question it being a horror. Yeah. <laughs> it did. It did catch me by surprise. I mean, it was. Me too. It was definitely surprising. Of that was the person that was or thing that was holding the rifle because I think Justin and I we were talking about this earlier today. We both thought that it was the the child. That mm. had had the rifle, but then I'm thinking back. Well, the rifle wasn't even seen. It, it, yeah, that too with the hoof. The hoof actually, you know, <laughs> pew, pew. <Yeah. laughs> bang. Well, Kyle, um, <laughs> since this was your movie, <laughs> why don't you go ahead and give yeah. it a score? Oof, gosh, um, yeah, the, uh, yeah. Like I said at at the like before, this was I. At the end of this, I was very, very confused and into what I actually saw. Um, but I don't know. Talking about it more, um, obviously the cinematics were stunning. Obviously, Iceland is beautiful to begin with. Um, I, I thought the the CGI for the Lamb Kid was off a little bit, like during the, the very ver- like the, the <laughs> well. <laughs> it's not a kid because that's a goat, a, but anyway. The lamb um, child. Lamb child. Lamb baby. Lamb I child. don't know. Whatever the hell little, this little thing is. Little baby lamb child. But little when man. they were doing the close-ups of <laughs> covered it up, you know, without the human bits showing, it was a real lamb. Mm. And, you know, that would that looked great because it was real. But then when they put it onto a kid's body, I'm like, oh, that I just... A, it doesn't look right, but yeah, just the movements and everything were just like, you know, very fluid and yeah. I don't know. I did like the dancing part when he was dancing to the drums. He was kind of wobbling back and yeah. forth. I love um, it. 
<sighs> I don't know. I think I'm going to give this. I mean, it was a decent film. I did somewhat like the aspect of no dialogue in the very beginning. It it definitely added to that mystery. But I'm I think I'm going to give this just a just a even 5 right okay. down the middle of the road. A 5 for Kyle, John. I like and this is this is going to be weird for me, but I liked the ambiguity. Hmm. I liked the fact that you can honestly, at the end, you can come up with your own conclusion, hmm. and there's no, there's no. We proved this today. There's no one right answer for this film. It is what it is. What it's going to be. What you make of it, which I, I think is I, I think is kind of cool. Um, so if you want it, if you want to do a deep dive and see the whole re religious piece of it, then that's, then that's, a, that's you. If you want to do the mythological piece of it, you know, blending of, of lore, then that, then that's cool too. You know, it's like whatever it means to you, you, you can, uh, you can come up to your own decision. Um, I did like the, um, the locations. I think the location was amazing. The, um, the music, I, 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 what I heard, I liked. Um, it wasn't overpowering. It kind of, it really did set the the tone for that that um, situation. Um, I I think that um, Peter could have been kicked to the curb, and it would have been <laughs> it would have been a, a a slightly better movie. Um, and you know, it's just it's honestly to me, it's um, it takes Mary had a little lamb to a whole new level. <laughs> I mean, oh my god. Okay. All right. How long did it take you to write that one? We're, we're done here. You know what? This I'm Two glad seconds. we're on video now. You can see my expressions for the last <laughs> six, 70 fucking episodes. Every time one of those jokes, oh. jokes fall, I'm like, just kill me. Just kill me now. You guys know you love me. Oh my god. I didn't say I didn't love you. I just don't know about your joke telling. <laughs> Good job. No, I, I did not. I honestly did not see that coming, John. Good job. Maria yeah. had a little lamb. I'm glad. Yeah, wow. so what are you scoring? Um, I'm scoring this one. I'm actually going to score this one uh, higher than Kyle. Um, I'm going to score it a seven. Wow. Okay. A seven for John. <laughs> um, yeah, so I I enjoyed the movie. It it was a good mystery to me because I, I didn't... It, it kept me thinking throughout the whole thing. Um, I, I like the cinematography. I liked... Uh, it, it is a little slow, for sure. Mm -hmm. It could have been tightened yeah. up. Um some of the shots just seem to drag. Um, <laughs> it, like, I think it was an hour 46 minutes. It probably could have been, like, at least an hour 30, maybe even less. Maybe an hour 20. Or the shots longer than the days. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, it's... it's it, I, I love the ending, but at the same time, I hate the ending. Um, mm. because I was surprised by the man lamb. I, for some reason, I didn't think about like where the father was in this whole picture. Yeah. Like um, what made that thing? Yeah. For some reason, I didn't think about that at all. Uh, mm. so when he showed up that, that actually, that surprised me like in a good way. Like most movies don't surprise me like that. So I, I enjoyed being surprised, I guess. Um, but what I hated about it was the way like it actually ended. Like mm -hmm. I, I really felt like there should have been some kind of resolution that uh, that Maria yeah. had, like because it was just her in the middle of the see, field, like just looking around. Yeah, right? I wanted to see her at least like chase, like chase after him at, over the field, and then maybe we cut to black, you know, sure. after she, you know, with the the rifle, you know, maybe it leaves it un, un, unresolved in that way. That way, I could have been fine, but eh, I don't know. That's for the sequel, Justin. Oh yeah, Lamb Two: The Reckoning. Lamb Two. Oh the, God! The hunting. Know. The, it's it's the hunting. The hunting. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. God. Um. <laughs> so actually, John actually took my score, so I'm gonna go slightly higher. Uh, I'm gonna go seven point three. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bring us home, Eddie. I'm take fucking. Us, take us to the depths of hell. No, I'm. I'm. <laughs> With you the know, devil's reign. So here's the thing. So I'm actually I'm actually kind of happy in a way because this just tells me that all of those movies I've been holding back, all of those obscure, you know, uh, uh, movies it. from Denmark that that don't have any language in them at all that are just like 400, 400 words or less of dialogue 
and are literally like just a guy staring at a camera sitting on a couch. I can bring all those movies up now because now you guys are going to well, give them nines and shit. Be careful because we can also bring back some B movies for <laughs> you. Jesus. That's so be careful. So here's the thing. Um, that have way too much dialogue. Those those movies that are art for art's sake. Yeah. I, I don't like most of the time. Right? And this movie to me feels like they went out and they were like, We're gonna win con. Like that's what we're gonna do mm. right now. We're gonna make a movie that's like mostly shots of the mountains, and then there's gonna be this really thin story about like a husband and wife who lose their child, and then you know what? Ram Man. That's where we're going to bring this home. You know what I mean? We're going to win con with that. They did win con. I know. And that's my problem is that I don't understand. Again, maybe there's a maybe there's a, a folktale piece here that I'm missing. Um, but I don't understand the 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 weight that this movie seems to be holding for people. Um, I I didn't see it. And for me, Peter yeah. Peter's character just detracts so much from the movie. Uh, hearing you guys say it could be shorter, I 100% agree. I, I think, honestly, a short. I think this would have been a very fantastic short. I think John hit it on the head with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and you could have had the exact same amount of dialogue and the exact same amount of shots in a lot of instances and just shortened them up to where they weren't you know, four minutes long in some shots. Um I don't know. I just didn't see it. Um, for me, the movie was more imperfect than perfect. And that last shot you're talking about, John Justin, where where she is just staring at the camera and you know looking mm-hmm. around kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I think it was a cop out. I think that mm-hmm. they couldn't figure out how to wrap up. Her husband just died, and the thing that she was using to replace her child has also again now gone. You know, it's where she's um, now not just lost the child once, but she's lost the second child, too, on top of that. Right. So, um, personally... That's, that's why I, I wanted to see her chase ahead. after him and... And do something. I, or something. Well, and that's the thing. Back to more like, I just wanted more action. Right. I wanted more action in the movie. I wanted something to, yeah. to sort of bring the movie together to make it gel. Either more mm-hmm. action or more dialogue. You know, go mm-hmm. heavier with the drama or, or go with action at that point. Um, so, for me, I mean, this movie... Uh, I'm gonna get, you know what I'm gonna fall back on one thing you always talk about too, Justin. Watchability. I don't think I would ever it. watch this again. Yeah, you're right. And for me, that is really hard because I think I'd watch Death Race 2000 before I'd watch this again. And that's really difficult for me to say. I just don't. <laughs> I don't have anything for that. I know, Kyle. That was a throw, that was literally a nod to you, but appreciate um, it. Uh, I'm gonna go. God, I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna give it a 1.5, and that's for Naomi Naomi Rapace's acting because I did I did like her acting in it. I mean, you know, for what she did, I, I liked it. And the animal shots were kind of cool. It was kind of cool to see like 50 lambs be born in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was real. That was real and stuff. That was real, yeah. Yeah, it was real. I know that's what I mean. So like, okay, I'll, so that's where I'm at with it. Yeah, it's actually, like a, I, I was like reading a documentary. That, <laughs> uh, well, I was reading that Rapace actually spent time on a farm and uh, delivered a few lambs in order to uh, be able to do it on camera. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, so with that, uh, Lamb from twenty twenty one gets a screenwriter score of five point two. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So with that, John, we need to see what genre we're going to be spinning for, or what genre Ooh. we're picking for. Oh yeah. Okay. And here we go. Okay, I was going to say, I think so, anyway. It's like the slowest spin ever for a moment there. <laughs> crime. Mm, like oh, crime. crime. Okay, interesting. In a future time. Okay, oh so uh, it's going to be either between John and Eddie for crime. Uh-oh. Yeah. Going up against the gnome himself. Here we go. <laughs> There's no place like gnome. Do you have some <laughs> crimes ready, Eddie? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Sure he's got plus four yeah. crime. Yeah, you gotta well, look, no, like start looking said, at some crimes. It's, it's good to know that I can funny. bring up some obscure, really slow crime movie now. It's funny. Uh, Eddie spends all the time on his phone the entire show, except for the time when he needs to be on his phone and looking at oh. movies. <laughs> oh. Okay, he did good this go. show. Okay, okay here, here we, we go. go. Oh, man. It's gonna be John. Ooh. Ooh, it yep. was John. 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 Yeah. All right, I am going to pick one that I... Actually, I watched a documentary about um a while back of the actual guy um mm. i am going to pick serpico from oh, 1973 
Okay. It's uh, an honest New York cop named Frank Serpico blows the whistle on rampant corruption in the force only to have his comrades turn against him. Starring Al Pacino, John Randolph. Um, but it's directed by Sidney <laughs> Lumet. Oh, yeah. Okay. Huh. Well, interesting. Uh, join us back next Saturday where we're going to be reviewing Serpico from 1973. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell and do all the things and all the things. And uh, we have our Patreons. Check out all the links below in the description. Click on all the things. Buy some shirts. We need all it. the things. <laughs> just uh, just click on things yeah. and check, see where it goes. Our shop it's is actually internet. really cool. So check that out. So uh, with that, guys, uh, we're going to see you later. See ya. See ya. Later.